Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to you. It feels a little bit like being back at university, uh, and that for me is a privilege. There are also so many people who want to know about securitization, uh, and this seminar is everything you always wanted to know about securitization, but we're afraid to ask. This morning we have fantastic experts, and we it is really, we like to get to the bottom of this. This educational seminar is organized by the European Parla Parliamentary Financial Services Forum, the EPFSF, which is co-chaired by me with Otmar Karas, Vice President of the European Parliament. The purpose of the EPFSF, which was founded in 1999, is to create a platform for discussion with members of the European Parliament on all items dealing with financial services. This a session on securitization is important is important because it's a securitization is an important part of the capital markets union action plan of the European Commission and also the topic of the latest call for advice that has been given by the European uh, to the European supervisory authorities by the Commission. If the latest consultation of the European Commission and call for advice is an indication, we will be talking, for example, about all the fun things, capital requirements, liquidity requirements, supervision of securitization transactions, but also, and very importantly, sustainable securitization. I think we can expect that the Commission will engage in quite a broad review of the framework, and that is necessary. Very honorable participants in this uh, educational seminar on understanding securitization, its purpose in the economy and uh, different types of uh, structures. It's my privilege uh, to moderate this uh, session and to ensure that we use the next few hours in the most productive way for you. We have all worked hard to prepare the most informative uh, presentation possible. The securitization markets have uh, been through a turbulent time over the past decade. Certain securitization transactions, especially complex subprime structures with a background in the United States, played an important role in the emergence of the financial crisis in 2007. Welcome everybody. I'm just going to talk for the next 10 minutes, giving you a short introduction about um, what are the main types of securitization, how they work. I think I'd like to I'd like to emphasize to you that securitization is not massively complicated. talk to you about some real life uh, transactions. Um, very important to uh, grasp the the seniority point that William was talking about. If you look at the yellow arrows next to the the uh, blue column, the blue column is representing as a picture of the securitization split into different tranches. We use the word tranches to mean pieces of the of the of the underlying portfolio. And they range from AAA, which would be the highest rated or the least risky uh, and the highest quality tranche, going down uh, AA, single A, triple B, double B, which would uh, each of these tranches would have increasing uh, increasingly greater uh, amounts of risk in them. The first thing when you go to a rental car is they ask you once you have booked your car if you want to pay an additional insurance. So they use, please, if there's any lawyer in the public, the use of insurance for as a, as a parallel for um, synthetic securitization is not a legal term. So please don't take it as a legal term. But the first thing that happens, you go to the uh, car drive, uh, car uh, rental, they ask you if you want to buy the additional insurance. This is because traditionally insurance have assessed what is the what is the more likely loss that you can have on a car. OK, 
Okay, let's turn our mind to the exciting world, um, world of the securitization uh, regulation, which has been evolving for quite a number of years. So on this first slide, what I wanted to do is just to give you a bit of a flavor of how in the immediate aftermath of the financial crisis, um, the concerns that were raised in connection with securitization um, were addressed by numerous regulatory reforms. So with the fact from 2019, from the beginning of 2019, we have securitization regulation regime in place. And sometimes it's referred as STS regulation, but in fact, it's much more than STS. Securitization regulation regime can be broadly broken into six parts. We hope that this session has provided a good overview of the basic functioning of, of this mechanism and uh, the various uh, functions it serves in the financial system. Like any financing technique, uh, there is, of course, a degree of complexity in, uh, in, and technicality in, in how securitization works. Uh, I hope that this session has tried to explain some of the, the basic structures of the market, uh, and we have also tried to um, demystify some of the, the concepts uh, around securitization and, and explain the experience during the, the 2008 uh, financial crisis um, and how the market has been evolving in, in the European Union. Uh, on behalf of the EBF and AFME, uh, let me thank our excellent moderator, um, uh, Professor Bart Yossen. Thank you very much. Uh, let me thank our speakers, uh, Daniela Francovicchio, Maria Green, uh, William Perodin and Steve Gandhi for sharing their expertise. Uh, I would like to thank the, the European Parliament Financial Services Forum for making this session possible. Uh, and my colleagues, uh, Lucas Bornman at the EBF and Carolina de Giorgi at AFME for uh, helping to put together this session. Uh, and last but not least, a big thank you to the uh, to the audience, to, to all the participants. Thank you for your, your questions and, and for being here. Uh, and we hope to continue to be in contact uh, with you in the, in the coming um, period. Thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you.